What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. All right, so today's video is about why the Canon R5 is overheating. I have some theories on it and I'd like to share it with you and I think that'll give you a lot more information on whether you should buy the Canon. Uh, versus other cameras and it, it sheds some light on on I think overall all the different brands and um, So, you know, obviously though like, you know, Canon has its own technology has its own processors and things like that So let me set the stage um, So, you know, like if we were to, to compare Across all the different cameras, you know, there's the sensor size uh, There's the type of sensor uh, There's how sensitive the sensor is um, you know, the the media that it records to um, and and so on and so on. So there's a lot of different factors that's going to affect the image. Um, but overall, um, what I think is going to create so much heat is, um, you know, all the different parts working together and uh, continuously doing that. So, you know, after five minutes or 10 minutes, the temperature might be at a sustainable level, but after a longer period of time, um, running all those different parts is going to make the, um, you know, the, the, the camera uh, heat up to a point where it can't function. What it's really gonna boil down to is how hard you are pushing the camera. And um, I think of it as, um, I think it's gonna be because of the bit rate. So at 8K RAW, uh, the Canon is recording at uh, 2600 megabits per second. So to give you some perspective, for example, uh, the Sony A7S, A7 III, not the A7S III, but the A7 III normally records at the 100 megabits per second. And honestly, like, you know, seeing the 4K footage, it's very acceptable. It's, 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 I think it's pretty good. Is it the most crisp that I've seen? Um, I would say no, but if you're going to compare that to, let's say, um, you know, why do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people choose Ari, the Ari actually records at uh, like around 1300 megabits per second, even though it's not 4K. Uh, in the 2.6K, it's recording at 1300. So all in all, um, you know, uh, if the Canon is recording at 26 times let's say um, a normal 4K camera, then that's gonna put tremendous strain and, and on the resources, on the components, and then also create a lot, a lot of heat. Um, so what I've heard is that Canon is actually um, releasing a new firmware update to, to reduce the amount of um, uh, data that it transfers. So So maybe from 2600, they're going to reduce it to, I don't know what it's going to be, like maybe 2300. Um, which is, I mean, the sad thing is that means that, you know, the quality of the image is going to reduce and maybe it won't be truly 8K um, or at least the level of quality that they were trying to achieve at the 8K um, is, is not going to be the same. And that translates to back to like, if you notice on, like, say, um, if you use, ever use a Sony a7 III or R3, um, you know, when they do the 120 frames per second, um, the bit rate stays the same. So essentially you're spreading out the same amount of information over 120 frames versus 24 frames. So, um, you know, that's why in my analysis when, or an actual use on set using, using the slow motion, you know, you have to definitely pump, bump up to light, but even then, um, I've always felt like the quality of that um, slow motion is less compared to, um, you know, if you look at the Canon R5, actually, slow motion in 4K, 120 frames per second is, um, is approximately, uh, according to their specs, 1880 megabits per second. So that's still a tremendous um, amount of information that's being, you know, that's being translated across uh, the, the different media, uh, which is probably why you need those CFAST cards. Um, so, you know, all in all, I think that's the major um, hurdle 
is the um, the bit rate. And so that's going to lead me to a second video that I'm putting together in terms of uh, comparing uh, three different cameras or three different um, sort of solutions to getting the best picture. And I'm going to put that in the next video. So hopefully you'll select that um, video and uh, take a look at it because that I think leads to more information about you know choosing between different brands and understanding uh, the different cameras and how they work. If you like this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe to it. Um, I'm always trying to give you more information, try to uncover and understand really at the heart of it because uh, right now a lot of the playing field is is level and it's hard to kind of um, you know just wade through all of the kind of like marketing hype and get down to you know how do I get a solution for whatever it is you're doing whether there's a short film or a commercial or whatever and will this meet the standards thanks and uh, I'll see you next time